Since you mentioned aging, uh, and it sounds like, and I think you think aging is fundamentally a program, it's it's a really interesting idea, one that's probably, it's got many implications. So um, whether, especially when we're thinking about whether or not we can mitigate aging or potentially cure it. So could you talk about your perspectives on that, what you think it might mean for the future of human aging? Well, so what we're uh, mostly aiming for is serious diseases of aging. They may, they, they may have very relatively little in common in terms of what organ is affected, you know, what system, there may be nine or 10 different pathways that can be affected, so-called hallmarks of aging. Um, so there's a great diversity, but they have, we, there is a school of thought that they have it, and a, a small core set of systems biology, systems medicine, that if you get at that core, you can, you can change the clock. You can make it shorter, uh, as in mice, or longer as in boa whales. And, and, it, and then you can rejuvenate. Uh, there is rejuvenation that occurs whenever you go through gametogenesis and fertilization, sort of normal reproduction. Uh, you reset the age clock. And you also reset it when you do something unnatural, which is cloning, where you take the nucleus from an old uh, animal and put it into a rejuvenating environment of, a, of an egg. Um, there's a, and there's also a rejuvenation process that occurs unnaturally when you use transcription factors. These are DNA binding proteins that regulate the expression of genes. Four of them, so-called Yamanaka factors, or so OSKM is the abbreviation. Um, these uh, will very convincingly take a very old cell and turn it into a very young cell. Meaning, like uh, say a skin cell from a eighty-year-old, and it will be it will take on many of the characteristics, most of the significant characteristics of an embryonic cell, in that it can um, produce almost all the tissues of the, of the body, probably all of them, uh, except for the um, extra embryonic and the parts that aren't part of the body that, that contribute to the early embryogenesis. So, um, so those are a few, uh, and, and there are many others. It's shown that, that the blood, uh, what's in the blood of older and younger animals can influence one another. The older blood makes the younger ones old, and the young blood makes the older animals younger by a variety of uh, biomarkers and uh, disease-related things. And so, so, so I, I, I fall into the school. There's two school, at least two schools of thought here. There's, there's a damage school where you have to go in there and kind of micromanage a surgery to fix the damage, as a surgeon might fix a damaged broken arm. Uh, and then, then there's the... Uh, epigenetic school where it says that if you convince the cell that it's young, it will fix itself uh, to a large extent. There will be some exceptions. Um, and, and so, and we've seen that uh, over and over, these, you know, fertilization, cloning, and uh, OSKM factors uh, are, are three, and the bloodborne factors are four examples. Uh, and we need to reset all of the uh, mechanisms, all nine hallmarks of aging, in probably all of the tissue types of the body, at least the stem cells for each of the body parts, uh, to have a shot at. Um, and we're aiming for for youthfulness, uh, lack of age-related diseases. So, so you should be youthful at an age which you, where you normally would be um, unhealthy, uh, even if you're not um, dying of any particular disease. So that's. That's what we're aiming for. It, it will be approved by the FDA for specific indications for specific diseases of aging. But then if it really is getting at the core of aging, it will be immediately applicable to almost all of the diseases of aging. And, and does aging just it, uh, affects everything, almost every morbidity, mortality, even like accidental uh, death, um, infectious diseases like COVID has a very, and, and it's, Cognitive consequences have very steep um, increases um, at around 60 years old. So I, I, I recall like one of your your former publications, I forgot what year, I think it was a PNAS one where you 
you did gene therapy and added three transcription factors to to rodents to mice and uh, there was some reversal of of aging or biomarkers um uh and uh, it was like TGF beta receptor and um, FGF twenty one and uh, alpha clotho. Uh, yeah, those three. Clotho, yeah, Th- so, those were not transcription factors. Those were soluble so, factors. So, that's right. So, that's right. Um, okay. But we also did a separate experiment where we took three transcription factors, OS and K of OSKM, um, separate experiments, uh, but delivered in similar ways uh, adeno associated virus. And then we did some other experiments with folostatin and telomerase, so the effects that ends the chromosomes of telomeres, folostatin is um, mostly muscle aim. But each of these has um, uh, you know, uh, re- reproducible impact on hall- ha- of hallmarks of aging, of biomarkers of aging, and diseases of aging. Um, and it affects multiple diseases, about seven different categories of diseases that we've done now in mice and some uh, a subset of those have been tested in dogs now aiming for a veterinary product. Um, the three that you mentioned, I think have slight advantages, uh, the, the fibroglass FGF 21 and TGF beta, I should mention it, that is an art. The, the other two are natural alpha clotho and fibroglass FGF um, 21, but the TGF beta, uh, receptor is normally membrane bound, but we made a soluble form of it. So all three of them tend to be soluble and they effectively uh, act like the, the young blood in, reju- in rejuvenating these mice and dogs. And hopefully soon they'll be in human clinical trials. Um, and, it, and that has the advantage that we don't yet have a good way of delivering to every cell in the body or every stem cell in the body. Um, Remember, I said delivery was very important, and we're and it's so important we haven't uh, we we need to fix it. Uh, but anyway, in the meantime, we can d- deliver the genes to a subset of cells in various parts of the body, and then those subset will deliver the proteins, those three proteins you mentioned, more broadly, and so you can, in principle, affect the whole body by that combination of two kind of tiers of delivery. Um, so that, that, that's the idea behind that. And the, and the dogs is a particularly good conduit to humans because they're, they're large mammals like humans. They live often in a human environment, eat human, like sometimes eat human food. Uh, they have similar kind of emotions and bonding and eye contact and all the rest. So it's, uh, and, and the owners can really sense their, their state so they can get it more subtle, um, positive and negative consequences earlier. So anyways, and, and it's a product uh, that people care deeply about their, their pets. So, so uh, I'm very excited about, you know, Rejuvenate Bio and Noah Davidson was a postdoc on my lab and he started Rejuvenate Bio and it, it seems to be shaping up to be a good product line. Yeah, uh, it'll be exciting to follow this results. It was, you kind of answered one of my questions, which was, you know, a lot of the, the rodent research, particularly with aging, it, it, not, not, not a lot of it translates, you know, to humans. And, and, you know, one thing in particular, I think that, uh, is, is important to consider with human aging is that, you know, humans are exposed to disease and viruses. We're not in this like sterile lab environment. And we have these periods of real like illness and muscle disuse. And, um, it, it's just very different than, than a rodent, but there's advantages to, to studying, to using rodents. Right. What, what, what do you think, like, why, why should we use rodents to, to, to study aging? Well, so, uh, so as the prelude to the experiment that you, you mentioned, where we used three, three uh, soluble factors in dogs, we did, we did 45 different gene therapies singly, one at a time, in rodents, um, mice, to make sure to find the subset of three that we wanted to test in rodents in combinations, various combinations. And then once we had settled on the three factors out of 45, then we moved into dogs and then we'll we'll next move into humans. So uh, you shouldn't blindly expect the the rodent model to work, but it's, it's, they're advantageous because they, they only live two years. So, so 
it's easy to see um, a longevity effect. Uh, we're not always looking for longevity. We're, we're usually looking for aging, reversal of age-related diseases, because that's what the FDA wants as well. But we do occasionally measure longevity. In the case of the folostatin and TERT uh, treatments, those did show a pretty significant, very significant um, longevity effect on the, on the rodents. Um, so uh, even, even primate trials can be deceptive. There's a lot of differences um, in the way that they're treated. The, you know, the, uh, there's just, in fact, in certain ways, dogs have, I think, a more similar environment, maybe, uh, you know, more to their liking, uh, more natural for them um, since they've been our companion for tens of thousands of years. So, uh, but even dogs are not an ideal, uh, larger, you know, pigs are very close to humans and their organs. That's why they're being used as transplants, but they're also in perfect 